It's interesting that you mentioned uh, Jamaica there and also the progress of the other teams in CONCACAF. You have a history in CONCACAF. Uh, you've played in CONCACAF Gold Cups. You've led Trin and Tobago to a World Cup. And uh, we got some news back home uh, last night, uh, which uh, raised uh, quite a few eyebrows. And uh, it's making people talk a bit and think a bit about, you know, what the possibilities are. Tell us about that, um, you know, the interest in the, the, the top job at uh, the Jamaica Football Federation, the Reggae Boys, and uh, the fact that um, you're on the, a short list for, for a potential uh, spot there. Welcome to the Ports Garrison. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Welcome to the Ports Garrison. I am your host, Phil Deport. If you're joining for the first time, I implore you to consider subscribing to the channel. That is if you like the content, many and varied. Now, for my regular viewers and subscribers, as always, I want to give enough thanks, enough manners, enough respects. Now, today I want to speak on one of my passions, football. The reggae boys, my beloved reggae boys. Now, for me, it's in no particular order. The junglers of Arnett Gardens, Reggae Boys, Chelsea, and Brazil. This uh, it stop. Right? Now, what do I want to talk about? Now, around the end of June last year, it was announced that there was a parting of the ways between Coach Al Grimson, the then coach of the Reggae Boys and the Jamaica Football Federation. Um, that came as a shock to a lot of people, but some person says they knew it was in the pipeline for, for a while, so they weren't really surprised. Um, a few, maybe days after, or a week or so after, is the resignation or the separation. Uh, we heard that Al Grimson had taken up a position with the Republic of Ireland, Ireland um, national team as their manager. Um, that's sparked a lot of debates and a lot of persons were saying this loyalty and all sorts of things and then the discussion went on to who would replace him many names were being thrown around people were wondering what was going on rudolph speed the chairman of the jff technical committee said that a manager or coach would be head coach would be named shortly and it would be a high level modern coach so lots of people again trying to figure out who this coach would be. One of the names that was thrown in the ring was none other than Dwight York. Trinidad and Tobago striker Dwight York, former player of Aston Villa and Manchester United, Champions League winner, multiple Premier League winner, and so on and so forth. Among those names also was his teammate at Manchester United, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, and so on. Lots of names. Coley, the Jamaican. Now, I came across a video recently, an interview between York and uh, a Trinidadian. Um, trying to see if I can get his name. I wrote down his name somewhere. Um, I'll give you his name. It's a Fuentes. Fuentes, Sean Fuentes, I think, if I'm pronouncing it properly, is his name. And I thought that the interview was rather eye-opening. And in that interview, York confirmed that he had actually applied to the Jamaica Football Federation and he was in a pool of one of 14 persons who applied for the job here. Take a look and listen at what York had to say. It's been well documented that I'm obviously a, a qualified manager and I've been in managerial position now. So obviously being out of a job, um, you are always seeking employment and you're looking for an opportunity to, to get back into the game. And so uh, being the individual that I am, and certainly um, when you look around the Caribbean, is there any job available? There wasn't any job available, so I couldn't even apply then. And of course, when the Jamaican job came available, I think that I'm, uh, I'm within my rights to obviously apply for the job. I think it's a, a tremendous honor and a privilege to manage Jamaica. When you look at the increase in terms of the players that they have at, uh, at, their, uh, at their service, I, I do believe it's a fantastic job to apply. And unlike any other manager out there, seeking an opportunity to get back in. And uh, I feel the Jamaican job is one that 
most managers would like to get involved in. And I certainly, uh, coming from the West Indies, I've always wanted to give back to West Indian football. And I, I'm sure a lot of people think, well, give back to Trinidad. It doesn't necessarily mean just Trinidad and Tobago alone, but uh, certainly the Jamaica job is available. And so I have applied for the job like anything else. And so um, there's been a, a real good positive response. And hopefully as they continue to assess the candidates for the job, then hopefully I will be one of those uh, managers. When the name Dwight York started making the rounds, a lot of people questioned his experience and so on. Um, that was posed to, to York and he went on to speak about his experience, his vast experience as a player and as a coach. He said there was nobody in the Caribbean who was as experienced or had the amount of experience he had in the game. Um, player and I guess coaching as well. Um, he coached in the Australian League, Makata FC, which won a title there. And he has gone through the various coaching seminars. And so he spoke about that, spoke to the attraction of the Jamaican national team with the influx of um, English-based players, how attractive it was and, and the increased the Jamaica chance of qualifying for the next World Cup. Here, take another look and another listen. You mentioned something there in terms of, uh, you know, the, your experience, uh, your networking and the fact that you're out there. Um, when you look at the Jamaica squad and you, you see that the majority of, of, of their players, especially their top players, are based in the UK, based in Europe. And obviously, you would have a background in terms of being able to deal with, with this level, this level of players, um, the likes of uh, you know even a Leon Bailey, um, who, who was out of the squad in the Copa America, but clearly people believe that he should be back in the squad, especially as they push towards a World Cup qualification. How does this uh, play in terms of the dynamics, in terms of where you could come in and try to obviously lead a, a Jamaica squad to a World Cup with the caliber of players that they have in their setup? Well, I think when you when you look closely and when you do your due diligent work in terms of the squad, which I have managed to send in my CV uh, and with a template of the development and the squad that is available to this uh, Jamaican uh, selections for the players. And so it is in line and it reminds me a little bit like Trinidad and Tobago when we had all these players, um, certainly from the UK base uh, or playing in, in some part of Europe. Um, it reminds me and the experience of the know-how and, you know, having the, being the captain in, 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 as you know, in, in terms of Trinidad qualifying, you have the experience within that. Um, and just, so there's a lot of similarity, in my opinion, that uh, revolves around the Jamaican job. And I think that with my experience, the know-how as a player, uh, certainly as a captain, the experience now that I've gained in, 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 as a manager, I feel that you know there is a lot of things in, in in line with the Jamaican job that I can see a lot of similarity there. So, with that said, said and done, I know that there will be one and two doubters, which you expect in 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 position of a top job like Jamaica. Um, there's always going to be a, a bit of a question mark. But uh, my answer to that is that I feel like I'm fully qualified. I'm excited by given an opportunity to manage a West Indian team and certainly with my knowledge of English football. And as you mentioned, the majority of those players are playing at some quality level in England, even at the top uh, tier in English football. I have an understanding and I know how, how to integrate those players. And I certainly have to deal with the experience and being at 52 years of age, I've been around. I understand the game. I've been a, you know, football is in the DNA. And I feel I can bring the, the, the sort of level of expectancy, the type of football, the brand of football that relates to, 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 the, to the Jamaican national team with the players at my disposal. And I, I feel very confident in my ability to manage such a, a tremendous uh, country like Jamaica. I am one who's big on bossing people, bossing the youth, bossing people. So I'm not that gung-ho about experience. How will people get experience if you don't give them the job that they aspire for? Um, many persons who have coached the national team in Jamaica 
we didn't really know about their any vast experience they had. Um, one of the persons that I said before who's been whose name is in the hat for this job is Oli Gunnarsson formerly Norwegian, formerly of Manchester United. And interestingly, when he made his debut for the national team of Norway, it so happened that he played against the Reggae Boys. First game played against Jamaica in the National Stadium in Kingston in November of 1995. And he scored in the game. It so happened that there was also another scoring debutant for Jamaica because it's a one-all draw and none other than the young Kevin Pelle Wilson, I think at that time he was about 17 years old. So it's interesting I can say I saw um, Solskjaer scoring his first goal for his country. I am not, as I said, I'm not going over about experience and, and I don't have a say in who becomes the coach. Um, York, for example, is a West Indian and he wants to contribute to the West Indian society. He will have no issues adopting. He will need, don't need no period of climatization to get accustomed to the culture of Jamaica because he's already part of the Caribbean and he understands we're not that dissimilar. Um, here, take another listen to some of what York had to say. But another thing that we could take note of is the fact that in the early parts of your career and also the latter part of your career, you had so much experience within the CONCACAF region. You know what it takes to go into Central America and get results in the, in the, in the likes of uh, Guatemala, Honduras, or Panama. Um, you also did it as a coach as well because at the back end of your career, you would have served as an assistant coach during a World Cup campaign, um, qualifying campaign for 2010. So you know what it takes, the dynamics of, of qualifying out of a CONCACAF region. And this is not something very easy um, for a coach to come into um, I mean, we all know that in CONCACAF, it's very different to other parts of the world. And I think this is where, obviously, it could suit you also. Yeah, listen, as I said, you know, it, it doesn't take a rocket science to really work out those, uh, those kind of logistics that you mentioned. You know, if you're looking for a player with knowledge and know-how who's been there, done it, brought a T-shirt, and certainly uh, I've done it. And so that aspect of it, I don't think there is an issue. I think the convincing part is maybe to a lot of people out there, you know, uh, a lot of people tend to use that line of, you know, the inexperience of being a manager. That might be uh, an issue. But, you know, let me just remind people what I've been through, not just as a player, but then certainly as a manager uh, to, to, to go into Makata FC and managing so, uh, you know, the all-star team against Barcelona in front of 75,000 people. So I'm, I'm used to that. And then you look how football now, and a lot of people think that, you know, you need a, a, a huge amount of experience to manage at this level. N not really. And I think you just have to look closely. Spain recently, in terms of the manager there, Luis Del Prentes, who is obviously just one that he was only uh, Spain under 21 national uh, coach and here with very limited experience he's managed to win the euros and certainly let me just take your mind back and this is how you know even the likes of Liano Scolini who is obviously the manager of Argentina he went in there with very little expectation very little experience and managed to win the world cup so we've seen these managers with vast experience who sometimes fail and not necessarily always have to be uh, vast experience. The, the thing is, uh, I'm a football man through and through. I've known the game. All the things that you have mentioned, I've been there, I've done it as a player, and I've certainly shown my qualities. Given the chance into management, I've managed to win a major competition in Australia. So I've gained that valuable experience. I've gone away and studied the game and also, you know, work alongside the likes of Arsene Wenger, uh, Steve McLaren, uh, Jürgen, uh, Jürgen Klinsmann, uh, as technical director for the uh, the Asia Cup, work in those environments, you know, speak to the likes of Pep. So, you know, I've been sort of learning the, the trade behind the scene without people knowing the kind of things that I've been through to get to this level. And that's why I feel very strongly. I feel that I'm fully qualified to manage a, a country like Jamaica. And like I said, it would be an absolutely privilege to do that. I, uh, and the expectation of, of, of qualifying is something that I'm used to. I've been in those high uh, sort of uh, valuable situation where it's expected and I feel that I 
with the experience I've been at 52, I can cope with that. And certainly, more importantly, get the players to buy in to the idea of the way how we play, the way how we retain, whether it's a high press or, you know, um, position base or counter attacking. These are simple things I can go into a little bit more details if and when, uh, if I'm selected to be Jamaican national coach. But uh, I feel like I've done my apprenticeship and I'm ready for an opportunity. And also just to mention, Sean, that nobody in the Caribbean uh, with the pedigree that I have, certainly what I've done in the game and certainly the level of qualifications that I've got, uh, been able to, to sort of go for a position like Jamaica, even my home country like Trinidad and Tobago, because the opportunity was never there. And so with the Jamaican job that is available, I feel that I'm, I'm more than capable and qualified to, to lead Jamaica to the, to the next World Cup. I'm in no way, shape or form pushing for York to get the job. But if he's the most qualified, if the JFF says he's the person for the job, then he's the person for the job. Whoever the JFF chooses, then I just have to go ahead and, and support him and hopefully hope for them for the best. Now, one of the issues I have, and I've stated this many times over and over, York mentioned it in the interview, getting to the next World Cup. To me, that can't be the ultimate objective. I mean, I understand it is get to the World Cup because some people think that with Canada, Mexico and US automatic qualifiers is an easy walk in the park. Far from it. El Salvador, Costa Rica, Honduras, Panama, Trinidad and Tobago, these Guatemala, these countries, some of these, most of these countries I just named have been to the World Cup before. They're not going to sit down and say, Jamaica walked you. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. And so Jamaica has to be well prepared. But I want it to be that we're looking at a long-term goal. Like, like Japan have a 100-year 100 100 plan, I think it is, a 100-year plan. I want us to have a long-term goal to start building from the grassroots, building infrastructure, designing a Jamaican st style of playing, promoting it, getting it all to all age groups so we can say, yeah, this is how we play. Build a thing. So we'll have to go looking for players all over the place. Local players. We can build it from it. Because when we last went to the World Cup, the, the back bone of the team was local players. Um... I don't know. As I said, I don't know if, if, if York will get the job, but if he does, then I have no qualms with it. Whoever the JFF uh, uh, appoints, then that's their, that's their prerogative. And I just have to support it. I just have to support it. Now, let me know your thoughts on what you think of York's chances. He seems a humble fellow. I, I don't know. Let's see. Now, let's see. Where, where the, I mean, soon and very soon, we'll know. But the only reason I have for posting this video is to confer, confirm that Dwight York's name is actually in the hat for the coach of the Reggae Boys. Um, until next time, as always, I want to thank you. Thank you for watching. And as always, enough love, enough respects, blessings. Thanks for watching.